And Bianca Snyde and Vanessa Kappen with the Alliance for Positive Health join us now. Welcome, it's nice to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Bianca, you worked with the Saranac Lake Police Department with Chief Parati uh, to install that first Narcan vending machine in the lobby of the police station back in October. What's been the response? I think it's been an overall uh, good response. I've been up there five times to restock the machine. Um, you know, I think it was a little bit busier in the beginning because it was such a new, uh, new unit. You know, everybody wanted to check it out. Everybody wanted to get the supplies. Five times you've stocked yep. it now. Does that surprise you that it's that popular? Not necessarily because it is such a rural area and resources are um, not as close by. It's good in that area, you know, it's because it's one of the only resources available. So. And you mentioned it is such a rural area. Mm -hmm. When we just talked with Katie Strack from the Franklin County uh, Department of Health, she mentioned that in the piece we just saw about uh, how these are, are Narcan deserts, really. And that's the idea behind these vending machines. Mm -hmm. To make it more accessible, to make it so that um, they don't have to really try hard to get the supplies. And are people, do you think, looking primarily for the Narcan? Mostly Narcan is what I have put, uh, restocked back into the machine. The test strips are being utilized. They are being taken out of the machine, but I just it's definitely more Narcan that's popular out of the machine. And the test strips, again, for fentanyl and xylazine. Mm -hmm. uh, fentanyl, it seems, being found in just about everything these days. And so potent, so mm -hmm. deadly. Uh, that's why it's important to have the test strips, uh, in particular for the fentanyl. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you really never know what's truly in what you're using. You know, somebody might think that they're using one thing, but it actually is full of fentanyl or somebody cut it with xylazine and then, um, you know, they're having all sorts of reactions or um, symptoms that they wouldn't have if they were using what they thought they were. And Vanessa, is the fact that fentanyl is being mixed with so many drugs now what many law enforcement and health experts believe is responsible for much of the spike we're seeing in, in overdose deaths? Yes. Yeah, so we're still seeing fentanyl in nearly nearly everything. We are st still seeing xylazine on occasion, but not like we were seeing last summer. And that was when it sort of became popular, if you will. Uh, last summer we saw a lot of xylazine, which is a, a, a tranquilizer used by veterinarians, uh, a horse tranquilizer, mm -hmm. uh, and, and being cut and laced uh, with, with other drugs. Yep, exactly. But when we are collecting reports from our clients and our participants um, for overdoses, the majority of them still include fentanyl that was inside the substance. The overdose epidemic has taken the lives of a record number of people in New York State. More than 6,300 New Yorkers died by overdose in 2022, up from 5,800 the year before, according to OASIS in the State Controller's Office. Vanessa, are there more recent numbers that we've heard within the last year? Are we still seeing a spike? Are we still seeing record numbers? We're still seeing, um, I would say, record numbers. What's really interesting is when we're looking at numbers, for our clients, more than half of the reported overdoses, they don't call 911. So those numbers don't get um, publicly shared in that way. Um, so all of our overdoses are usually participants responding to participants with naloxone, Narcan, and staying with that individual until they do recover. And we've seen the record number in New York State, New York City, same story here in the North Country? For, for us, it's hard to say at this time for this year because we are still collecting that data as we go. Um, but I do expect that number to still be very high. The major drugstore chains do carry Narcan, but at a price, they charge, what, $40, $50 often for, for Narcan. Yes. Are there other places that offer free Narcan? So a really cool service that we provide at Alliance for Positive Health is working with other organizations and becoming satellite sites. So we'll go out and train their staff on utilizing naloxone, and then they are able to distribute naloxone themselves. So the more hands we have in getting Narcan out into the communities, the better. But the vending machine, they go and they know where they can get the Narcan, and for a number of people that may be a better option. Yeah, well one of the barriers is an individual may not want to face another individual when asking for naloxone, mm -hmm. and going to a vending machine, they don't have to face that person. Mm -hmm. When Chief Parati agreed to put the uh, New York Matters vending machine in the lobby of the police station, he said at first he thought that having it in the lobby of the police station might be a bit of a deterrent, that, that people would feel uncomfortable going in to get it. 
He said after a few weeks he's, he, he changed his mind because he saw the numbers of people coming in to get it. Just because of the fact that it was a police department, people might be hesitant to, uh, sp like Vanessa said, speak to anybody to receive Narcan, let alone go into a police station to use a vending machine. But, um, you know, they really don't have to talk to anybody. They walk in the door, go to the machine, get what you need for supplies, and then leave. So I think maybe once people started doing that, they started realizing how easy the process really was. Um, you know, people kind of maybe lost that fear. The machine does ask for a little bit of information as far as date of birth mm -hmm. and zip code, but you really can remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. So this is the Narcan that comes from the vending machine. Yes. Uh, there are two doses mm -hmm. in each package. Are they easy to use, easy to administer? Absolutely. Uh, there's a red button that comes on the bottom of each of those doses. You squeeze the red button, put it between your two fingers, the whole entire dose will be released. Uh, the idea is to put those doses up uh, one per nostril. Uh, you wait about two minutes in between to do rescue breathing, but it's very simple. You know, stick it right in a person's nostril, press that red button, and then the medication releases. And how important is it that people have Narcan, know how to use it, and have it on, on hand? It's so important. You never know when you're going to need naloxone. And so there's so many folks who say, well, I don't need it. I have no need for it. And you never know. And so it's just important to have. Um, have it in your home. Have it in your purse. Have it at work. Um, you just never know. Uh, we have provide, provided trainings to folks where they will then be somewhere on a Saturday with family and friends, and they've responded to an overdose because that naloxone is in their purse. So no doubt. This is helping to save lives. It is. And now there are plans in the works to install a third vending machine in Essex County. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we were able to partner with Adirondack Health Institute um, through one of the rural community programs. And they are actually purchasing a vending machine. They're purchasing two, three vending machines, two of which that we will um, maintain. One will be in Essex County. So Hudson Headwaters will be outside Hudson Headwaters where we will stock it with naloxone, and Narcan, xylazine and fentanyl test strips. We're also gonna be putting in menstrual products, so we'll have tampons and pads in there. And we're also gonna put safer sex supplies, so condoms, lubricants, we're gonna stock the machines with all of those things. So that'll be right at Hudson Headwaters, which is right next door, and this isn't Ticonderoga, in this Ticonderoga. is right next door to Moses Ludington mm -hmm. Hospital, so that's where the health center's located. AHI reached out to us to see if we'd be willing to maintain that machine, stock it on a routine basis because machines, they're expensive and having them fund that machine is our opportunity to stock it. Are there other groups, other organizations that are looking at putting vending machines in the Adirondacks here in Clinton, Essex or Franklin counties? I think folks are very eager and desire the machines. Bianco was able to work with Chief Parati to get that first machine deployed. Yep. And I think now that other organizations, communities, counties are seeing these machines, they they're buying into it too. And so I think it's gonna get easier and easier to deploy these machines. Are you folks looking at any machines or are you looking at your offices and other distribution spots around Clinton County as far as free So at this time we're not looking to fund machines. Um, I think it will really depend on budgets and everything like that. Um, our efforts are really being put into getting our staff out into the communities. And then of course those satellite sites are a huge source, resource for us to lean into. And. Where in Clinton County can folks get free Narcan now if they're in the city of Plattsburgh or in, in the greater Plattsburgh area? So they can go to CVPH Hospital. They have our Narcan on hand. They can go to the SUNY Plattsburgh Student Health Center, uh, the City Police Department. The City Police Department has a community center downtown on Margaret Street. They also have our Narcan accessible there. Any idea how many, how many of these you've given out uh, in the past couple of years? Oh, jeez. Oh, Thousands. Yeah, thousands. Def definitely thousands. And you talked about the naloxone uh, training. Uh, you folks do that with a number of organizations. You do it a number of times during the year. Mm -hmm. You'll get together and, and show everyone how to administer naloxone, Narcan. We can do a training for really anybody that wants a training. I've gone to CV Tech and done Narcan trainings in different classes. You know, I've gone to uh, Beekman Town High School. And if organizations, schools are interested, do they reach out to you and, and, and connect with you folks to, to see if a training session is possible? 
Yes. Yep. Anybody that can contact us, we'll get them on the schedule uh, to be able to go out and do a Narcan training. You can't see it, can't taste it or smell it. As we mentioned, the state of New York, the Office of Addiction Services, better known as Oasis, has been running all kinds of ads on TV that folks have seen. They have a giant billboard hanging above the food court at the mall in Plattsburgh Champlain Center. They, too, are offering free Narcan and test strips, and they can also get those from the state of New York as well. Yep, that's another way for folks to be able to obtain naloxone, xylazine, fentanyl test strips. Um, we, a couple of our staff, were able to try it out to make sure that the system works before we refer our clients to it. It took a little bit of time, and then eventually they're getting that those products out to individuals. Um, we always will recommend for folks to reach out to our agency because if they need it same day, we want to get it to them same day. Bianca Snide, Vanessa Kappens, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.